Okay, picking up where we left off, okay? I was saying when the video ended, do you mind earthly things, okay? Another scripture we're going to look at is uh, Romans chapter 8, verse 5 through 6. It says, For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the Spirit the things of the Spirit. Verse 6, For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Okay, remember earlier we said we are to bring every thought into the captivity in, or into obedience to Christ. Bring every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ, sorry. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Okay, verse 7, because the carnal mind is enmity against God. Okay, another scripture says a friend of the world is the enemy of God. It's very important to take that into consideration when examining yourself. Are you a friend of the world? Do you have a carnal mind? Because if so, that's enmity towards God. You're not in a good spot. Okay? It says, For it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. This is why you need to walk in the Spirit and mind the things of the Spirit. Okay? For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. Okay, we need to be worried about the spiritual warfare that's going on, okay? Very important. Okay, another scripture about do you control your mind? Let's go to James. Let's go to the book of James real quick. And we'll get into do you control your tongue also in this. James 1848. Okay, it's important to understand that, you know, you are not double-minded either, okay? Because it ex explains this in... James 1 8 it says a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways 4 8 reiterates it says draw nigh to God and he will draw nigh to you cleanse your hands ye sinners and purify your hearts ye double-minded okay very important to understand that you have one mind okay as it explains I think in Ephesians um, we are to have one mind okay we are to be focused on Jesus entirely okay very important um and do you control your tongue okay james chapter 3 verse 5 through 10 says even so the tongue is a little member and boasteth great things behold how great a manner a lit a matter a little fire kindleth and the tongue is a fire a world of iniquity so is the tongue amongst our members that it defileth the whole body and setteth on fire the course of nature and it set it is set on fire of hell for every kind of beast and of birds and of serpents and of other things in the sea is tamed and hath been tamed of mankind but the tongue can no man tame it is an unruly evil full of deadly poison therewith bless we god even the father and therewith curse we men which are made after the similitude of god out of the same mouth proceed the blessings and cursings my brethren, these things ought not so to be, okay? You should not be cussing. You should not be having filthy, um, immature, disgusting jokes come out of your mouth, inappropriateness. These things should not come out of your mouth, okay? Yes, I'm guilty of these things and I've repented and it's an ongoing process, but I don't cuss. I, I don't say filthy jokes okay i'm brittling my tongue as scripture says to do okay we're to control what comes out of our mouth okay jesus said what comes out of the mouth is what defiles the man okay it's very important that you have a control on what's what you're saying okay you shouldn't be cussing this cussing there and, and james is saying out of the same mouth proceedeth blessing and cursings my brethren, these things ought not so to be, should not be. Examine yourself, okay? Let's move on to number five, okay? Number five, do you seek first the kingdom of God? Okay, how, how do you apply this to yourself? Well, when you're angry, when something bad happens, what's the first thing you do? Do you get mad? Do you worry about how much you're going to have to pay for the damage you cause if you get in an accident? Are you worried about, um, you know, just anything in the world? What is the first thing you do when you start to worry? What is the first thing you do when you get angry? 
Do you seek first the kingdom of God or not? If not, you need to examine yourself and get your priorities in order. Okay, let's read why. Matthew chapter 6, verse 33 says, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Okay, let's read, read Luke 12, 16 through 32. Okay, Luke 12. And I'm going to read verse 16 through 32, okay? And he spake a parable unto them, saying, The ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentiful, and he thought within himself, saying, What shall I do, because I have no room where to bestow my fruits? And he said, This will I do. I will pull down my barns and build greater, and there will I bestow all my fruits and my goods. And I will say to my soul, Soul, thou hast much goods laid up for many years. Take thine ease, eat and drink, and be merry. But God said unto him, Thou fool, this night thou, thy soul shall be required of thee. Then who shall these things be which thou hast provided? So, so is he that layeth up treasures for himself and is not rich towards God. Okay, because he didn't seek first the kingdom of God. He relied on his own riches. Okay, he relied on himself. He didn't seek God for anything because he was caught up in his own thing. Okay, he was caught up in his own stuff. You see? And right at the end in verse 21, So is he that layeth up treasure for himself and is not rich towards God. Okay, verse 20 says, But God said unto him, Thou fool, thou fool, this night, sh I, or sorry, thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. Then who shall these things be which thou hast provided? Okay, self-explanatory. Verse 22, And he said unto his disciples, Therefore I say unto you, Take no thought for your life, what ye shall eat, neither for the body what ye shall put on. The life is more than meat, and the body is more than raiment. Consider the ravens, for they neither sow nor reap, which neither have storehouse nor barn, and God feedeth them. How much more are ye better than the fowls? Okay. In a, I think in Matthew it talks about you are worth more than many sparrows. Okay, And it says God knows the number of hairs on your head. Okay. Okay, how much more are ye better than the fowls? And which of you, with ta uh, taking thought, can add to his stature one cubit? If ye then be not able to do that thing which is least, why take ye there? Why take ye thought for the rest? Consider the lilies how they grow; they toil not, they spin not. And yet I say unto you that Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. If then God so clothed the grass which is Today in the field and tomorrow is cast in the oven. How much more will he clothe ye, you, O ye of little faith? I like when Jesus says that because it's true. And seek not what ye shall eat or what ye shall drink. Neither be ye of doubtful mind. Okay, you are also not to have a doubtful mind. Okay, and pertaining to number four, do you control your mind? You should not have any doubt in your mind. Doubt displeases God. Verse 30, for all these things do the nations of the world seek after. Okay, remember we are told not to worry about the things of the world. Okay, we are not to mind worldly things, earthly things. Remember what Paul said in Philippians. Okay, and your father knoweth that ye have need of these things. Okay, but rather seek ye the first, but rather seek ye the kingdom of God and all these things shall be added unto you. Fear not, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. That's just so awesome. And notice how he said, fear not, little flock. Remember he said, narrow is the path, few there be that find it. Very important to catch that. Okay. But rather seek ye the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added unto you unto you seek first the kingdom of god okay jesus is saying stop worrying about 
the food, stop worrying about the clothes, stop worrying about the cars, stop worrying about your house, stop worrying about your problems, stop worrying about your job. Worry about the kingdom of God. Worry about following Jesus, okay? Worry about seeking first the kingdom of God. And what did Jesus say would happen? And all these things shall be added unto you. Verse 30, it says, Your Father knoweth that ye have need of these things. If God knows you need these things, why do you worry about it? Okay, Jesus is saying he feeds the birds. The, bird, the birds don't worry, you know, where they're going to store their food. You are worth more than many sparrows, he says in Matthew. Okay, it's important. Seek first the kingdom of God in all aspects of your life. Okay, very important that you do this. Okay, very important that I do this. Very important that my family does this. It's very important that you do this. It's very important that your family does this. Seek first the kingdom of God and all things shall be added unto you. For what is this life? Okay, scripture says we are, it is but a mist. Or it's but a vapor here for a short time and then vanisheth away. What is this life in the eye of eternity? Always remind yourself. Okay, and you know, same goes for me. So, um... One more that I want to read on the, do you seek first the kingdom of God? Colossians 3.2, and then we'll move on to number 6. Colossians 3.2, it says, Set your affection on things above and not on things of the earth. Reiterating, again, seek first the kingdom of God. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. On the earth, okay? Remember, the earth gets burnt and everything on it, Okay? There's a new heaven and new earth coming. Stop worrying about this earth. It's going to be destroyed. Sorry. Newsflash. Okay. All right. Number six. This is very important. Very important. Do you have the true love of God in you? Ask yourself. People are going to be quick to answer some of these questions that I've asked, but honestly, Really sit and ponder these things, okay? Do you have the true love of God in you? Because there's a lot of people and they'll comment and I can just tell that, you know, they're not being led of the Holy Spirit. Okay? They don't have the true love. If you have the true love of God in you, you do not have it in you to condemn others, to be hateful and angry towards others. You don't really have, you know, the desire to argue and, you know... You just want people to, to learn and receive the truth. And if they're not willing to, then you just pray for them, okay? That's the love of God. Let's get into some scriptures on do you have the love of God in you, okay? Let's go to 1 John chapter 2, verse 3 through 5. 1 John 2, chapter 3, or chapter 2, verse 3, sorry. And hereby we do know that we know him... If we keep his commandments, remember Jesus said, If you love me, keep my commandments. Verse 4, He that saith, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments, is a liar. They are a liar. Okay? Very important to understand. Okay? And the truth is not in him. People have, have used this against me because I'll, I'll say something that, you know, contradicts their false doctrine they've believed. Okay, I just teach the Bible and I just read the Bible and I go by the Bible and I understand and I study it and that's what we need to do. That's what we need to do. Okay, because we don't need to worry about anybody else. We need to study to show ourselves approved unto God. Okay, it says in verse 5, But whoso keepeth his word in him... Verily is the love of God perfected. Did you know the love of God can be perfected in you? It says, Hereby know we that we are in Him. You want the love of God to be perfected in you? Well, keepeth His word. Keep His word. Obey His commands. Be a doer of the word, not a hearer only, deceiving yourself. Okay? Another verse is uh, 1 John chapter 4. Verse 7 through 11. 
Starting in verse 7, Beloved, let us love one another. Let us love one another. Man, that does not go on enough. For the love for love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. In this was manifest the love of God towards us, because that God sent his only begotten Son into the world that we might live through him. Okay? Herein is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his Son to be the propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. You can love somebody with not agreeing with them, or when not agreeing with them, you can still love them, and you can still show that love, okay? People let disagreements really just, you know, ruin everything. It's just sad, you know? And it's, you know, there just isn't enough. You know, people don't really truly love people. Okay, when you love somebody, you, sh you tell them the truth. And if they don't receive the truth, well, you know, you don't have to have a relationship with them, but you still love them, you know? Jesus died on the cross knowing not everyone was going to believe he did it. Knowing that there's going to be people who, re who reject what he endured. You see? It's important to know that not everyone is going to accept the truth you have to offer, but there will be some who do. We just need to do it in the spirit of love, in the spirit of meekness, humble, you know? We also, we ought also to love one another. That's just very important. Um, Verse 18, it says, There is no fear in love, but perfect love casteth out fear, because fear hath torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. Okay, going back to chapter 2, verse uh, 5. But whoso keepeth his word in him, verily is the love of God perfected. Okay, like I said, did you know that the love of God can be perfected in you? How do you know that? You no longer fear anything. There is no fear in love. It says, but perfect love casteth out fear, because fear hath torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. Okay? If there is no fear in any aspect of your life at all and what whatsoever, well, it looks like the love of God is perfected in you. That's pretty amazing. But I'm still working on that. There's still some things that I'm fearful of. And I that, that right there makes me examine myself to want to build up to that point. You see, I want to strive for that. Okay, when you examine yourself and you find fault and error or you're not, you know, quite matching up to the scripture, that should not be discouraging. It should be encouraging to want to work on yourself, okay? Grow in the Lord, okay? Very important. John chapter 15, verse 12 says, This is my commandment, that ye love one another as I have loved you. Do you love one another? Do you love everyone else as Jesus loves you? Jesus died for you. Uh, somewhere in 1 John it says, uh, There's no greater love than this, than he that dieth give his life for the brethren. Um, yeah, uh, I, I can't find it. I think it was in 1 John, I believe. But yeah, that's the love when you give your life for somebody. That's love. Jesus gave his life for you. That should show you how much he loves you. Do you love everyone else with that love? If not, work on that. Work on that. Okay? And the uh, last one I want to use is Matthew chapter 22, 37 through 39. And then we will move to number 7. Okay? 37, chapter 22. Verse 37. Jesus said unto them, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind okay again the love of God and you are to love God also with all thy heart with all thy soul and with all thy mind okay if you love God with all your heart all your soul all your mind that should emanate towards loving everyone else as Jesus loved you okay that really is how it how it should be okay now, 
Number seven. This is a big one. This is a big one. It may not seem like it, but honestly, it is. It really is. Have you truly forgiven others the way Jesus has forgiven you? Okay. Let me share a personal, you know, little story of mine. Uh, back when I was younger and my mom was pregnant with my younger sister, um, there was a possibility that my mom was not going to make it through the uh, pregnancy because of her health issues. And a family member had the power of eternity, uh, attorney, sorry, not eternity, had the power of attorney over our college money, okay? Uh, my mom had a large sum of money for myself and my sister set aside for our college fund, okay? If you watched my testimony, you can kind of understand how that affected our life. And, uh, but I don't mention the college money, but you will understand when you watch the testimony and see the kind of life I went through. Probably would have been different if we had that money. But God uses evil for good, okay? So... Anyways, this family member had the power of attorney over all our college money. Well, it disappeared. See, I could be angry about it. I could be resentful. I can be angry towards God for allowing that to happen. But we are to forgive, even as Jesus has forgiven us. So the question remains, has you know a family member, a friend you know, done something that was just so horrible in your eyes that you haven't forgiven yet, you need to address that. You need to forgive that person because they're going to have to answer for it themselves when they stand before God. You don't need that weighing you down. You really don't. Jesus said, come unto me, all ye that are heavy burden, and I'll give you rest. I know I misquoted that, but you know what scripture I'm talking about. Um... Where was that? Uh, Matthew chapter 28 says, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Let go of that heavy burden of unforgiveness. You really need to. Okay. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 32 Let me start at actually verse 31. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 31. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be ye kind one to another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. Forgiving one another. It's a big one. Sorry. And um, Luke 17, verse 3. Take heed to yourselves. If thy brother trespass against thee, rebuke him. And if he repent, forgive him. Okay? Remember Peter said, how many times should we do this? Seven times? And Jesus said unto him, no, 77 times. But, you know, he was speaking in a sense. It doesn't matter. Okay, if somebody sins against you, rebuke them. How do you rebuke them? You do it in the spirit of meekness, okay? People really get quick to be angry and stuff like that, okay? It's important to understand if he repents and he's like, oh, he saw the error in his ways and repents, forgive him, okay? In Matthew chapter 6, verse 14, it says, For if ye forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. Okay, notice he said that after he gave the example of how to pray, our Father which art in heaven, Notice how in that prayer it says, Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Okay? We are to forgive others as we have been forgiven. Okay? Philippians 4 8. Last scripture, and we're closing it off there. All right? Philippians chapter 4, verse 8. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good rapport, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. Okay? Write that scripture down and go over it and 
listen to it. Think on those things, okay? Think on whatever is true, whatever is honest, just, pure, things that are lovely, things that are of good rapport. If there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on those things, okay? Now, let me just go through the seven again, just to go through it. Hopefully, you have it all. Okay, number one, the three judges. Okay, do you judge hypocritically? Do you use righteous judgment? But most importantly, do you judge yourself? Okay, that was number one. Number two, how obedient are you? Okay, number three, have you truly died to self? Okay. Number four, do you control your mind or does your mind control you? Also, do you control your tongue? Okay, that was number four. Number five is do you seek first the kingdom of God? Okay, very important. Number six, do you have the true love of God in you? Number seven, have you truly forgiven others the way Jesus has forgiven you? Okay, those are the seven ways to examine yourself to see if ye be in the faith to see whether ye be in the faith okay hope that video helps i know not everyone's going to watch all of it both parts but if you did may the lord bless you thank you for just watching and i pray that you know this stuff helps you in your walk with the lord that's what it's all for i hope it helps you grow closer to him helps you learn the scripture more that's what it's all about okay just this word just learn it and if what i do helps you do that all glory goes to god okay i am nothing more than a servant okay that's it so thanks again guys for watching i hope that video helped you if you have any questions please contact me as i always say otherwise be blessed in jesus name guys and i'll talk to you next time